Hi, I'm Jake Unders here with Ideal Aerosmith. Today we're going to be doing a quick start guide for a 1291BL. Hi, so what we're going to be doing is going through the simple steps needed to get your new 1291BL rate table up, going, and ready for testing. The first thing you'll do is you'll find in the, uh, the things you received this uh, Ideal Aerosmith business card USB drive. Uh, along with your manuals, this drive will also include a copy of Ideal Host Lite, which is a simple program that we use for operating and running the rate table. The next step will be to connect the rate table to your controller. Your rate table will come with three harnesses. The first is W201, which is the larger connector, is your access power harness. You'll connect P260, J260 of the harness to P260 of the rate table. and P360 of the harness to J360 of the controller. Next will be W202, which is our axis feedback harness. P250 to the rate table, and P350 to the controller. The third cable, which I've already connected to the rate table, is a simple ground strap. Once those are connected, we'll connect power to the controller. The controller can use either 110 volt or 220 volt. In our case, we're just going to use 110 volt to get us up and started. The final cable is going to connect the controller to our laptop that we're using, which is the, the computer you will have installed Ideal Host Lite on using the business card. In my case, I'm going to use a, a simple serial to USB converter with a USB extension to the laptop. The next step will be to power on the 1291BL motion controller using the large black switch. You'll hear the fans kick on and see the green power LED illuminate. Then we'll go over to the laptop that we're using and fire up Ideal Host Lite. Select the COM port that we are using. For the COM settings, we'll make sure that we are at 115.2 baud rate, 8 data bits, no parity, stop bits of 1, flow control none, Buffer, 256, termination, carriage return, and line feed. We'll click OK, and we will enable polling to see that we have some position. To make sure that we have actual feedback, we will go over to the rate table. We'll press the brake release button on the front of the rate table, rotate by hand to see that the breaker is released, and we'll watch the display on our host to see that we have position feedback changing as we rotate, which we do. Our next step will be to command a motion to get our rate table spinning. The first thing we will do is enter BRK0. All of these commands that I use will be available in your, uh, in your ATL manual. BRK0 is the command to release the brake. When we hit enter, we hear the brake release on the table. We'll then enter SRV1, which is the command to enable the amplifier. And we will command a motion. In this case, we will jog a rate command at 50 degrees per second. We can see on our polling that the rate table is, the velocity is 50 and the position is counting up. And if we look at our rate table, it spins away. In a perfect world, you're now ready to bolt your device to your rate table and begin spinning. However, it's possible that at some point something happened uh, that does not allow your rate table to spin as easily as it did for us today. So some things to look for is the emergency stop button. If this is depressed, uh, you won't be able to release the brake or command a motion. Very possible that while uncrating this 
Someone picked it up and pressed it against their body and pressed that button in. So you want to make sure that that button is out. On the back of the rate table, we will also want to make sure that the jumper is in place on the terminal block across the two middle, which is uh, another part of the emergency stop loop, which you have access to if you uh, desire to put your table in a uh, safety enclosure or have something, some sort of interlock um, that will trip and not allow the rate table to run if someone's near it or whatever you plan on using. Uh, you'll also want to make sure if, if both the emergency stop is satisfied and the terminal block is jumpered, to check these two fuses. Uh, you'll have replacement fuses that come with your installation kit to make sure that they're both good. Aside from those, if you have any other issues uh, starting up your new 1291, feel free to email support at idealarrow.com and we'll be happy to help you. Thanks.